Hi, my name is Len Patios, and thanks for purchasing Hard Rock Mining. It was totally shot in Sonora, Mexico, and we think you're really going to enjoy how this process works. At the end of the video, we've added some information, a few updates on phone numbers, and about some product maintenance, and uh, I think you'll find that a little interesting. Uh, at the end of the video, if you have any questions at all about the contents, the setup, or the use of this equipment, as shown, by all means, please feel free to contact me, either by home, or email, or my mailing address, which is at the end of the video. I'd be more than happy to share information with you, help you get set up if you're using this particular product, or if you have any questions at all about mining, dredging, I might be able to help you out and save you some money. Uh, other than that, enjoy Hard Rock Mining, the video. Thank you. Hi, my name is Len Patios, and the purpose of this video is to show you hard rock mining. Uh, we're going to do a complete process from crushing, uh, to classifying, to concentrating. Three things about hard rock mining is obviously you have to have a source, you have to have something to crush the rock, and you finally have to have something to extract the gold out of um, the material. And uh, basically we have a Keen R46 rock crusher, and we have the Technic concentrated cable, which is a gem of a piece of equipment. It works really well. So we're going to take you through a whole step-by-step -step process of what's going on, uh, how the rock crusher works, uh, right down to using the cable and concentrating it up. And I hope you like it, and we'll go from there. Okay, this is the RC46 Rock Crusher. It's powered by 11 horsepower Honda motor, which really runs good. Uh, it burns about a half to three quarters of a gallon per hour, but we found out in the dusty conditions over here, if you don't keep the filter clean, your gas consumption is going to go up to about two to three gallons an hour, if you can believe that. It just floods out. So what we did to incorporate, we have a Craftsman 2400 watt generator, which we also use for a power source for the table. We got a small fan, and we run the fan right over the <coughs> carburetor or air intake for the air filter. This keeps the dust from going in and clogging up the air filter. Now, if you're in a position where there's some wind, you can always turn the trailer around so that the wind is blowing away from the carburetor, but it is very important that you keep the air filter clean so you don't burn a lot of gas and foul the uh, plugs up. Another thing about this crusher, <clears throat> you never ever want to run it out of gas. If you do, then what happens, the material that goes through the jaw, jaw crusher and then down into the roller mill, uh, you have to take all that out and it's it can be a job sometimes. So never let it run out of fuel or have it stop on you. We run it about two and a half hours at a crack and we still have about a half a tank of gas in there so that's pretty good. So by trial and error we found a good working solution for it. And there's three of us working this right now and we switch off about every hour. So it runs pretty good. We use a little plastic concrete mortar mixer uh, for our dump site. Uh, we use a five gallon bucket and that's good for to hold one bucket and then we just run it through again the second time and uh, or depending on how fine you want to get the material down. Now up here is the hopper. <clears throat> uh, another thing we incorporate is we took a little jigsaw and we cut open this area we got the sun cut this area out right in here about two inches for better feeding. The hopper also can come forward and if you look inside you'll see the jaw crusher. Now what we did also is we hard faced the uh, heat treated plate. This will extend the life of the plate oh, four to five times. And if you keep track of it when the welds get worn down you just re-weld over them. Plates run about sixty dollars so if you hard face it you can save yourself some needed ex unneeded expense. There's also eight points of uh, 
zerk fittings to lubricate the uh, roller mill and it should be done about every eight hours. Uh, good heavy duty grease for dust condition is recommended and other than that the system is maintenance free. We did encounter one little problem with the crusher and I still haven't figured out what it was and I'll point to it right down here. This top bolt after a couple hours with the use the bolt head snapped off. Maybe it's because of the pressure on the uh, roller mill and stress but you might want to pick up three or four of these extra bolts just so you have them especially if you're in the uh, in the boonies someplace. So plenty of grease, some nuts and bolts, some tools. Uh, the unit itself is basically maintenance free. <coughs> Almost nothing has to be done to it. So just check the bolts periodically. Uh, it takes about 10 minutes to do all the greasing on it. And it's on a trailer so it's very easy to move around if you have to do it. Uh, the unit itself works real well. The only drawback is if you have wet material it won't pulverize very well going through the roller mill. It ends up pancaking the rock and not crushing it. So for this particular unit, uh, the material has to be dry. Uh, but that's about the only thing that I can really say is a, is a negative about it. Uh, we have some material here <coughs> that we're drying and uh, in the sun. And uh, it works quite well. We got about 25 five gallon buckets. We put the material in here and we crush it through. Uh, the machine will do an honest one ton per hour. No problem. Now if you want to get it down to a finer mesh then obviously uh, it won't quite do that amount. Uh, we're down here in Sonora, Mexico where the gold itself is very very fine and again through trial and error we found out that the material has to be brought down to about a hundred mesh which is like the consistency of flour pretty close to it. Uh, that may not be the case in all situations depending on where you're crushing but for us down here in Mexico, uh, where the gold is very, very fine, you really can't see it with the naked eye. But with a 20 power microscope, you can see that it's loaded. Uh, we have to take it down this far. And this is where the concentrating table really does its job, which we'll show you that a little bit later on. We're going to run some material through here. The rock crusher will, will crush a 4x6 rock, no problem. So basically what we're going to do is because of the noise factor and me trying to narrate while it's running what we're going to do is we're going to take some of this rock which is in the bucket right here as you can see it's some pretty good sized rock and with some finer stuff and we're going to run it through for you in a sequence to show you just exactly what it can do and how long it takes to do it. It takes about 10 minutes to do a bucket in about three passes. So what we'll do is we'll just run it through. I won't narrate it because of the noise. You'll see the fan working to keep the dust away. And uh, after that, we'll show you the, the finished product. 